into a live demo. Now, what I'm going to do in this demo is I'm going to do a basic call flow. Our call flow is going to have three menu options, customer service, tech support, and sales. However, I'm going to do some preliminary work. I'm going to set up a database connection. I'm going to set up a call profile and an IVR application. I'm going to explain these pieces because we're actually going to use them in the call flow I build. Now, on the right-hand side, we're going to change a call profile uh, piece of data, change a priority. I'll do a callback in queue. I'm going to do a database lookup, and I'm going to touch on one or two of the things that you can't find in the manual, and I'm specifically going to talk about Annie versus calling. So let's uh, exit out of there. We'll come back here in just a bit. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's clear my screen. I am going to navigate to Contact Center Director. It's a good idea to navigate and set things up. So when you're planning your IVR, put it on paper, put your flow process together, and there's always some preliminary pieces that need to be set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is because in my um, call flow I'm going to use a database connection, I'm going to create a database connection. Now in the upper left-hand corner I'm going to type in database. To show you how easy it is out of the box, I simply navigate down to database connections. And then down below, I have these connections already built. Now, if I want to add a new connection, simply go to the right-hand side, hit New. And down below gives me my next connection. We'll call this Demo Today. And then I can pick the connection I need. SQL, MySQL, Access, Oracle, Sybase. So there's quite a bit. Let's do SQL. Once I'm done, I'm going to put the username and password, the number of simultaneous connections. I've never seen anyone use more than four, and that was with a very busy contact center. But um, you can adjust those accordingly. And then I'm on the right-hand side. I'm going to hit Create. Well, let's change this to SQL. SQL Express. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I want. Okay, SQL Express, and hit Create. Now I have a brand new database connection. You can see here it's called Demo Today. Now the next piece of the database connection is I'm going to want to store information, and we store those in call profiles. Remember, call profiles are like labels. They store information, and for database purposes, um, I'll type in call profile and select call profile on the left. Now I already have quite a bit of call profiles configured, account balance, account name, but just to show you, you can add anything you want. If I need a new one, let's go to the right-hand side, hit New, and down below I'm going to get the next sequential. Let's call this Customer Policy ID. Hit Create. Now I have something very specific to insurance companies and something that I can play with inside IVR. Now the next piece I'm going to do is configure something that's rarely talked about. It's called IVR application. Now in this case, this is not configuring the actual application where we configure the IVR. This is allowing me to create a widget so I can track where people press in the IVR. So I recommend giving these logical names. Let's go to new on the right-hand side. Almost everything inside uh, director allows you to hit new. And here I've got new. I'm going to call this one, uh, one Let's call it CS for customer service. Let's call a new one. We'll call this one two, two for tech support. I'll just call it oops, tech support. And then lastly, I'm going to call this one new three sales. Create. Okay, that is the setup. Now let's go into IVR specifically. I'm going to navigate to GCCS which actually stands for Graphical Call Control Scripting. And we're going to build the call flow. Now, this is going to go pretty quickly. We have about another 20 minutes left, so um, I'm going to sort of fly through this a little bit because I want to make sure I cover some key pieces. So in the background on the left-hand side, your palette has the widgets. Um, Shortcut doesn't refer to them as widgets, but today I refer to everything as a widget. That's kind of a plug-in. That's what people have gotten used to, and the toolbox does a great job of that. Let's create a brand new call flow using this, the pieces and building the call flow as uh, I talked about. So you hit new. Now, you can give it a name down below. I'm not going to worry about that. In the interest of time, let's just start building things out. So here's my call fl flow on the right-hand side. It's all drag and drop. So on the left, I'm going to give a menu. Thank you for calling. Please press 1, 2, or 3.
Now when I press one, two, or three, I am going to update a call profile value simply because I want to put the reason that the caller called in. So now I'm going to take, um, let's finish the rest of that. Once I do a call profile value, I'm going to ask the client for their account number. So I'm going to get digits. And for each branch, I will get digits. So that's like the same. And then after I get the digits, I'm going to go to a database. So I'm going to do a SQL Connect. Now, as I said earlier, we have a lot going on in a short amount of time. So if you feel like you're getting lost, please use the email I sent earlier. And then I'm going to do a SQL Execute. I'm going to ask the database for some information. Let's move it through. And then lastly, I'll close, uh, close the database connection. And you can see it's all drag and drop. I'm just doing three branches, and then I'm going to decide where to set that call, where to route that call. All right. So while there are three similar branches, to connect them, you just drag and drop. So let's go back to the beginning. Option one, press one, go here. Press two, go here. Press three, go here. Now once someone presses those options, here's where we're going to ha start having some fun. Remember the IVR application? Over here is a widget called IVR application. I'm going to tell the system to turn on that trigger so that I can count how many people are pressing one, two, or three. Once I do that, I'm going to get the account number information from the user. And then from there, we'll connect to a database. And then we will ask the database for information. I will disconnect from the database. And then before we route the call, we can do a logic switch. A logic switch is where I use a condition. Tell me what I got from the database and decide what I should do with that call. Now here, I'm going to use three just to show you logic. But logic can be several things. If I remove this one here, a third one, I might use this decision tree. I talked about that earlier. So let's go through here. Let's connect the logic. And then from this point forward, I'm just going to connect one going through. And here is true. And remember, if it's false, you have to have that filled out as well. This is the one I was talking about right here. You've got to fill out a true and false statement. Now, here's how easy the flow builder is to use. Because this is reading, thank you for calling, blah, 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 you're going to point to the prompt down below. So here's the prompt. This is where the files are stored on the server. It will navigate me directly to my files, my recordings. I'm going to go to the English files, and I have a subdirectory on the server called custom. So I would definitely point to my specific sort of um, recording. I'm just going to grab any one of them just for the sake of uh, moving to the demo. Now, when they press 1, remember my option is for customer service, press 1, for tech support, press 2, etc. Here's where the change the call profile becomes valuable. I'm going to right click down below. You'll notice that when you select an icon down below, you always have options. In this case, I might want to do the um, collect the DTMF. The customer pressed some digit, right? And I'm going to give it a value in this case. Because I have this IVR application, I can change the value to when they press one, this is customer service. I've now created a label so that when the um, agent answers the call, they will see this label. If it's option two, we're going to do the same thing. Change the call profile to that option, which was tech support. Now, I'm not going to configure the third one. I want, hopefully, you're getting the idea. Now, let's go back to one. That is customer service. That's the call profile I updated. I can do it manually. Now, the next thing, because the client pressed one, I want the IVR application to be triggered. Remember, we have one equals customer service. This will set off the reporting, which is built into ECC. I can report how many people pressed 1. So that's what this IVR application widget is used for. Since I'm asking the, the individual for their account number, this next one that says get digits, right down below, the call profiles, those are what I configured. I can enter information. If I collect information, I'm going to collect here their account number. I'm going to put it in the call profile called account number. And down below, the account number, the account number has six digits. All right, next thing I'm going to do is connect to a database. So here's my database for today, demo today. Once I've connected a database, the next piece is a little bit more complex, 
But to give you an idea of some of the things that we've talked about, I'm going to point us to the database. Normally, I would say select everything from my table where account number equals percent account num. And that is the call profile here. When I make the reference to it, I simply put a percent sign. Now down below, you see where it says call profile and column? When I right click, I can do many things here. In the interest of time, I can go to priority. I can automatically change the call priority to something different. If they come in as 50, I can change it to 100. I'll, if I right click again, I can also go and get the account balance from the database. I can also get the account number from the database. So lots of information. Now the mapping of the column is saying, where do I find that information in your database? We might find account balance in a field called balance. Let's leave it there. The next thing I would do once I've decided where I get my data from the database is I will close my database connection. After I close my connection, here's where we have a little bit of fun. This is the evaluator. It's the logic switch. I can do things such as if the account balance, which I got from the database here, is greater than $500 or $5,000, follow what happens in one. One is right here. And then that sets my destination. You can see my destination can be a service. Remember, the service is the queue. So this might be my customer service group. Hopefully that gives you kind of a quick hit. We have a few minutes left. I do want to go back to the database lookup. Here's what I want to point out. Oftentimes, instead of asking the customer for their account number, you will look for their account number based on their caller ID. So here, select everything from my table where phone one equals caller ID. That's what you would think, or according to Shortel's call profiles, would be calling. However, even though calling shows up at the desktop as the caller ID, you cannot use it in a select statement. You must use Annie. That is something not found in a manual. So we've changed priorities. We changed um, the call profile information. We did a database lookup. I'm going to stop here because I threw quite a bit at you. Are there any questions? Uh, I kind of hesitate to go into the alphanumeric. Obviously, you can see that we were ambitious today to show quite a bit of information. Are there any questions, Nick? Yeah, so the first question, um, what about using uh, DTMF for entering account numbers with uh, alpha characters? In the so in order to do, yeah, so you can do that. But in doing that, you need to set up a logical um, character association. So for exa what I mean by that is to get to B, you have to push 2 twice, so 2-2. Two, two. So you would need to set something up where it would look for information, and it could be a complex evaluator. So for example, you might have an option that says if you need to enter uh, an alphanumeric, press star and then your selection. So for a B, it would be star 2-2. Two, two. Star for a C would be star 3-3, three, three. Uh, excuse me, 2-2-2. Uh, two, two, two. So you have, there's a lot more work involved. Yes, you can do it. Uh, maybe we should take that as a one-off. Um, it's a lot more involved, at least at that aspect. Any other questions? Uh, looks like that's it for so far. Okay, and that was a very quick answer. So I encourage you to reach out to training at inflowcommunications.com. We can talk a little bit more in detail on that. It can be done. With that in mind, let me show you. This may give you a glimpse into how that can be done. I'm going to go into a routing process that I have here that I've created. I'm going to specifically go into alphanumeric readback. Okay, now this does get a little hairy, but here's what I can do. I'm going to just go to the one at the, uh, let's go to, yeah, let's go to the one at the top. Okay, so this flow process is what I'm using at the top here. Now, there's several things I used call profiles for. Number one, you see I created a call profile called loopback count because I want to count how many times I circled back. And the reason is, if I'm looking up the spelling of a first name, the first thing I need to find out is how many characters in the first name. If the guy's name is John, there's four characters. But what's most important is when I'm doing the loop, 
I want to count. I'm on character one. I'm on character two. I'm on character three. So I'm using the call profile to create a bucket where I can store the character digits. Now, when I go to my SQL statement, this is where it gets a little more complex, but you've got to be smarter than the system. What I do is say, go find the first name, and then tell me how long the first name is, then tell me how long the last name is, and you notice it says as length name. I'm just telling you, bring that information to me as the length name. Then I get the count balance, etc. But you'll notice down below, when I map um, my values, I'm mapping these pieces of information uh, to the call profile for temporary storage. The most important thing is to look at the value, find out how many characters there are, and then systematically loop through it. Go to the first letter, oh, it's J. Go to the second letter, it's O. Now here's where you get, can, get, can get creative. My play file says, play the recording. Um, to spell your first name, press 1. And then I go through a database query and grab the information. Now, this is where I start doing the loop back. I want to find out how many records there are, how long, um, how many times I've circled to the loop. This is where I do it here. It's a little more complicated. Hopefully, I'm not scaring people away, but it, what I'm showing you is that it, you can do things that are not in a manual. Lastly, I'm telling the system, based on the file name, how long it is, and my loop count, go grab one digit. So what's going to happen here is the second will be two. Go grab the second digit, one. And tell it to play the file equal to that digit. And so the readback here is playback wave. What I did in the loopback is said, if it's an A, go find my recording of A. So what I had to do was sit down and make a call, uh, call rec uh, recordings, 60, uh, excuse me, 26 of them for the letters of the alphabet, A, B. C. Those are all separate files that I loaded into the directory, and now I can say, go grab the information, find the match, play back the A. Here's what you need to know. Because the system is going to a directory on IVR, you do not have to put the dot .wave extension. And every time I play a recording and a file, such as, let's spell the name John, J, then increase my loop count to 2. Now it's saying, go grab letter 2, O. Go grab letter three, H. And then this decision tree here, this decision tree does nothing more than count how many people uh, or how many letters are in that character length. What I did was say if there's four characters in the name John, any time I reach less than four characters, go back to the beginning and get the next character in sequence. Once it hits, hey, the number is greater than the four digits, then it finishes off. Would you like to read that back again, et cetera? This is a classic example of using call profiles to be smarter than the system so that I can record and do things not intended or out of the box. So back to the question you posed a moment ago. Can I do alphanumeric input? Yes. It would require you setting up a system that can read the values based on a match. So you would have to do things like star 22, star 222, so that I know how to make a relationship. 222, star 222 means C, Star 2-2 means B.